everybody. It's Taylor from Urban Furniture Outlet. I am joining you today to talk about follow-up calls. So uh, before we go any further, we're going to be talking specifically about following up on uh, your customers that you've had sales quotes with. So I want to congratulate you. If you have a sales quote, that means you got through 90 plus percent of the sales process. You were effective with building rapport. You qualified your customer and they trusted you enough to go through that sales quote process. So you're almost there. So kudos to you. Uh, so now we need to make our follow-up contact. Uh, so rule number one, before we get too far ahead, try not to use the word follow-up. I will be using it for this video, but I will explain a little bit later why we don't want to use that term. Uh, so step number one, you want to be prepared. So hopefully, like I said, while you were working with your customer, you were qualifying, you were asking good questions in terms of uh, what was their need or their problem that they were trying to solve? What is their timeline? What is their budget? Uh, and most importantly, why was it a sales quote and not a sales order? So uh, what was the objection? What was the I need to check? Did they need to measure? Did they need to talk to their girlfriend or boyfriend? Um, were they just not sure about the product? So um, you really, when you're at, when you're with the customer and you're doing the quote, you really want to make sure that you put notes down of why this wasn't a sale, so that when we do this follow up call, we're addressing those concerns. Um, so step number one: be prepared. Review your sales quote. Um, try to recall the interaction that you had and identify why this was a sales quote and not a sales order. Um, you want to make sure that you are highlighting any concerns that the customer may have had. You're remembering whether uh, they were super excited about the product, whether they needed delivery by the first of the month. You want to know where the urgency was, where there are opportunities for you to really highlight things. Um, so be prepared, review your notes, review your sales order, look at upcoming availability for delivery, those types of things, alternative items that you might be able to offer the customer. So a little bit of prep work makes it a whole lot more effective. Uh, second, smile, smile when you're talking. Uh, even if you are not on video like me, uh, when you smile when you speak, it comes across in your, in your tone, in your energy, um, people don't want to buy from people who make them feel sad. So uh, you guys are all charming and wonderful and your personalities uh, just shine when you guys are in the showroom with people. So you want to be your same sparkly self when you are on the phone with your customer. Okay, so smile, uh, be personable. Um, so got that all out of the way. Uh, you want to use a professional greeting. I'm going to give you guys a, a, a t an example of a greeting, but you would obviously want to amend it to be uh, specific to you. Uh, you want to um, call them by their proper name. So Mr. or Miss, then their last name. Uh, introduce yourself. This is Taylor from Urban Furniture Outlet. And the reason that you're calling. Uh, you want to avoid saying things like, I'm calling to follow up on the quote that we made together. I'm calling to ask if you're ready to make your purchase. Um, you want to avoid saying things that are going to make you seem salesy. So uh, a good way to do that is to be specific about what was in the quote. So if the, you are following up with a customer who uh, did a quote for this big, cozy, gorgeous sectional that they were super excited about, uh, for their new apartment, you say, uh, hi, Mrs. Smith, uh, this is Taylor from Urban Furniture. I was following up with you about the conversation that we had about a sectional for your new apartment. I know you were super excited. You needed to measure. I'm just uh, reaching out to you to see how that went. Like, I, I want to make this happen for you. We still have a delivery available on Saturday. So um, so I'm here. I'm here to help. So, uh, so you want to be personable. You want to be specific. So if the quote was a bedroom set for their daughter, talk about it being a bedroom set for their daughter. If the quote was about their furniture for their new apartment, talk about their new apartment. So you don't wanna say, quote, again, I know I'm using the word follow-up. It's hard when it's ingrained in our heads to not use that word. Um, but you wanna make sure that you're personable and that you're being specific about the product that they were excited about. 
Um, the next thing, recall the emotions. So if they were super excited about this set and they wouldn't get off of it and they were just like loving it, remind them like you, when we were in here together, you really love this set. So I was calling you today because we have it available for you and we can get it to your house this weekend. Um, what do we need to do? Is it the wrong item? Is it the right item? Like, how can we get this done for you? Um, so kind of bringing back the, the emotion, the emotion may not be, you know, that they're so excited about the product, but that they're so frustrated with whatever the problem is that they're trying to solve. And that is effective for creating urgency as well. So if it's that they hate their mattress and it's disgusting and nasty and it makes your back hurt, then you're kind of highlighting like, you know, when you were in here, you were really telling me that you could not handle this mattress another day longer. So, um, so you want to highlight that we, we have great options available. They're very affordable and, and we can take care of that problem for them. So, uh, so create an emotion, whether it's excitement about the new product or kind of reminding them about how unpleasant the thing is that they're trying to get rid of. Um, create an urgency, which I just kind of hit on a little bit. Um, urgency could be that they let you know that they're moving on a certain day and that day is looming. Um, whether that day is in a week or whether that day is in a couple of weeks, we have limited stock and most of our items we don't receive uh, more than every four to six plus weeks. So if they really loved an item, even if they're not moving in a couple of days, the urgency is that we might sell it out from underneath them. So we, we don't want that to happen. We want to be able to lock and reserve that item so that it's saved for them and they could be happy, happy when they move and they have exactly what they want. So go you know, creating that urgency. Maybe the urgency is, like I said, highlighting the problem that they're dealing with, that they really hate their sofa, dog ate half of it, and like they just don't deserve to live like that. So maybe the urgency is that they, we just want to turn the page, have a new year, and, you know, new sofa. Uh, so create a little bit of urgency. Uh, be a problem solver. So again, if, if the hesitance was that they weren't sure about the product, before you call them, find some other alternatives that might be a better solution for them. Um, that's offering value, that's offering service. And then when, when you're in conversation, you can offer to send them links for those products. You can set an appointment with them so that they can come back in the showroom and, and examine those products with you. So, um, so being a problem solver and trying to help them get that decision made and get that thing done. Um, handling objections, again, when you created the quote and it wasn't a sales order, there was some type of obje objection. Uh, are they the decision maker? If they needed to talk to their dad or their sister or their mom or whoever, like who is a decision maker and what are the things that are really the most important for this customer? Um, they might have made you think that price was the biggest factor, but really comfort is the biggest is the biggest factor for them. So uh, maybe requalifying a little bit, but uh, but you want to make sure that when you're calling to uh, to try to convert this sale that you are ready to handle objections, that you've done a little bit of thinking and a little bit of problem solving homework before you call them, uh, meaning that if it was a hesitance on the product that you have some other options for them in your pocket. If it was hesitance on dimensions, you have those dimensions ready for you, or you have a smaller version of a similar set ready to offer them. Um, so, so keep those objections in your mind and be ready to answer to those because those are what kept you from getting the sale the first time. Um, and finally, uh, don't get off the call until you have a commitment. So again, if it's a matter of looking at other products, offer to set up an appointment get them back in the showroom with you. Um, but you don't want to leave it open-ended. If it is still, a, I need to talk to so-and-so, then just kind of ask them permission to commit to you and say, hey, okay, I understand you got to talk to so-and-so. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you a couple of the options that I suggested. And I'm also going to give you a call in a day or two just to see where we're at. Okay, these are my hours. This is when I'm here. Pleasure, pleasure working with you. Let me know I'm here if, I, if you need anything. And that way, when you do follow up in a couple of days, they're not like, oh my gosh, why is Taylor calling me again? They are, um, they're expecting it and they've already kind of given you permission whether they wanted to or not. Um, so again, just to recap a little bit, preparation, uh, don't talk as fast as I do. I'm doing this quickly because 
uh, trying to get through all these points, um, but you want to relax. You want to be prepared, review your notes and everything in Greenboard before you contact your customer. Uh, you want to congratulate yourself because you've gotten a quote, which is a huge, huge accomplishment. And now we're just trying to convert that to a sale. So you're, you're almost there and it just takes a little bit more uh, to get us there. Uh, make sure you smile, make sure you're personable, be as, just as charming as you are when customers are in our showroom. Uh, you want to have a professional uh, greeting. So uh, not, hey girl, you're, you're talking to them in a little bit more of a formal way. So you can uh, say Miss Smith or, or Mr. Owen or whatever it is, but I would rather a customer correct you and say, no, call me Bill, than for us to be too loose and, and then be offended. Uh, so being professional, introduce yourself, let them know who you are and where you're call calling from. Um, let them know why you're calling and don't say, I'm following up on my quote, say, um, I wanted to call you because I've been thinking about that amazing sectional that we were looking at together. And I know you said you're moving in a couple of weeks and we're limited on stock and I really want to make this happen for you. So what can I do? Like, where are we at? Uh, what questions might you have? And, and just be personable, be specific. Um, highlighting how excited they were. You want to you wanna get emotional about it. You want to make them remember how they felt when they were in the showroom or remember how much they really wanted to get rid of that dog eating sofa. Um, and you want to highlight those things because emotions kind of help us make decisions too. Um, you want to create that urgency. So whether it's stock is limited, whether it's uh, limited delivery dates, whether it's just you don't need to live another day with that sofa that's all dog eaten, uh, whatever it is, you want to create that urgency. You want to be a problem solver. So again, why was it a quote and not a sale? Uh, you want to highlight, um, you want to be ready to answer to the objections that the customer had, and you want to be able to offer alternative products if that's where the hesitance was. Uh, and then finally, don't leave it open-ended. Uh, commit the customer to you guys talking again, whether it's a customer coming into the showroom or whether it's you giving them a call in a day or two to see how it, it went measuring or talking to so-and-so. Okay, so kudos to you guys. Uh, good luck with all your calls and with your sales and happy selling.